So, moving up in our Kong API Gateway video series, we reached to the HTTP log plugin, which is a really cool tool to use because it sends whatever log that it has to an HTTP endpoint so we can grab the data, store in a database or a file or whatever, and analyzing on it. Like, for example, we can detect anomalies and other cool stuff that we can do. So, if you want to learn more, stick with me. What's up guys, medium guy here. I hope you're enjoying my playlist on the Kong API gateway and its free plugins that we can add to it. And if you haven't watched my previous videos, I'll put the links down below. We've had really cool tools. We tested out a lot of plugins and in this video, we're going to see how the HTTP log plugin works. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as we can see in the official documentations, the HTTP log plugin sends requests and response log to an HTTP server. So it is clear the way that it works because it sends whatever data that comes to the gateway to an endpoint that gets the Kong gateway's log data and do the thing that it requires. And like, for example, it saves it in a database or whatever. So as always, in the official documentations, I'm going to move down to the place that I can find to enable the plugin globally. In here, we have the sample plugin configuration and in here we have the available parameters that we can use to configure this plugin to the Kong API gateway. So as always, we have the name, the service, the route, the consumer and enabled, which is a Boolean. So in here, the first parameter that we're going to use is the HTTP endpoint, which is the HTTP URL endpoint to which the data is sent. And the next is the method. So it is the method that is used to send the data over the HTTP request. The supported values are post, which is by default is set to the plugin and put and the other one is patch. So this is basically the method that we're going to grab the data on the HTTP endpoint. So we have the content type, which is an optional configuration. Again, the only value can be application JSON, which is the value that is set by default. So the next one is the timeout, an optional timeout in milliseconds when sending the data to the upstream server. So another one is keep alive, which is again an optional value in milliseconds that defines how long an idle connection will live before being closed. So we have also flush timeout, which is also optional time in seconds. Uh, in this video, we're not going to use it. The retry count, the number of times to retry when sending the data to the upstream server and the queue size, which is the maximum number of log entries to be sent on each message to the upstream server. And the headers configuration is that when we want to add some headers to the, ups to the request that is being sent to the upstream servers. So in here we have the log format. As in the previous video, we saw how the log plugin log the data which was in the exact same format as in here. So basically this is the format that the HTTP log plugin will send the data to the upstream server, which is the server that is listening to our logs. So that's it. We're going to copy paste the sample configuration to our config file. So in here, I'll try to copy the configuration. In here, I'll come to the kong.yaml. In the plugins section, I'll paste the configuration. So I have a simple Node.js server running in a port, which is listening to requests and logs out the request body data. I'm going to run it in a port. So I'll include these in my repository files where I'm going to put the links in the comments section. So basically what it does is exactly as I said, which is a simple Node.js server. 
which is listening to requests and logs of the request data. So as we saw, it is listening on the port 8080. If I go to Chrome, I'll try to make a request. I see that the response is coming from the Node.js server, which is running in the port 8080. And another one, I have my echo server also running in a random port. So going back to the configuration file, I'm going to copy my node server's address to the HTTP endpoint configuration and the method will remain post, the timeout will be 1000 milliseconds, the keep alive will also remain the same and the retry counts is 15 and flush timeout is 2. So this is the configuration to enable the plugin globally to all the requests so I'm going to save my file, switch to the terminal. All I need is say docker compose op. So this is going to run my Kong API gateway. So whatever request that I make to the Kong API gateway, it is going to make another request to the Node.js server that is running in this terminal. And it'll try to log all the data has been sent to it. So if I switch to Postman, in here I'm trying to make a post request to the Kong gateway with the path of slash echo and I'm going to pass some body in JSON format to my request. So if I hit send, I switch to the terminal. In here I see that the request has been received by the Kong API gateway which is a post request and the HTTP log plugin has successfully sent relevant data to the Node.js server and it has been logged to the output of Node.js server. So in here we can see all the data has been included to the HTTP request of the HTTP log plugin so we can see like the method was post the size the url and all the other data that has been sent by the http request plugin so this is basically how this plugin works in the node.js server as you can see we can get the data we can store it in a database or a file and like for example we can do analysis on that we can set alerts so if we detect any anomalies, we can have notifications sent to us or any other stuff that we can do depending on our case. So that's all for this video. I hope you'll learn something new in this one. If you want me to go deeper in this, just go ahead and ask me in the comment section. Also, if you have any questions, just go ahead and ask me in the comment section. Just don't forget to watch my previous videos where I tested and used a lot of Kong API Gateways plugins, which are really handy tools to use even in our production environments. And just don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that, I hope to see you in the next videos.